All right, so we're uh, starting recording now. All right, we'll give it just one more minute and then uh, we'll get started. All right. Um, I think we are ready to go ahead and get started. So um, let's go ahead and kick off today's monthly Julia Health meeting. So first of all, everyone, warm welcome to another Julia Health meeting. So glad to have everyone here uh, this month. I hope everyone is staying warm, staying safe. Um, where we are in the world, welcome to the meeting today. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to say just before we get into all the things that we have planned for today is apologies on my side for a bit of a delay when it came to sending out announcements about today's meeting uh, this week or rather this month. I've been recovering from a bit of a horrible flu cold type thing. So I hope everyone is staying healthy here in the meeting. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot of things on the agenda today, and I am excited to talk about them. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. All right. So the first thing, uh, just to kind of go over some logistical announcements, uh, as I mentioned, as I was setting up today's meeting, uh, this is our first attempt at actually having a recorded uh, Julia Health uh, monthly meeting. These meetings in the future are recorded through Zoom and will be posted onto uh, the Julia Language uh, public YouTube channel. So if you're not able to make these meetings every, uh, every month or so, uh, they'll be posted on YouTube uh, from now and hopefully until you know perpetuity <laughs> so i uh, just wanted to go over that little bit of uh, logistics uh, but uh, the next thing on the docket today and i'm pretty excited about it because i see a lot of new faces here today in julia health is new member introductions so i want to go ahead uh, take a second to pause here and i see a lot of new faces if anyone wants to introduce themselves uh, this is the opportunity um, to maybe just say a quick like couple seconds or a minute or so just about who you are, uh, what brought you to Julia Health today, and we'd love to get to know you. So I'll go ahead and pause and I'll let anyone who wants to introduce themselves. And if uh, and people can just speak up if they want. Okay, Luna, I see your I see your hand up. Luna, you can go ahead. Hello. So can you hear me properly, first of all? Yes. Yes. Coming in. Great. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm Luna. Um, let's have a quick recap of my history. Many years ago, like more than a decade, I studied biology. I decided to go into something more practical. I 
did a master's in epidemiology, but it dropped out because statistics caught my attention. Uh, and then fast forward to today, I am now uh, doing a PhD in Bayesian statistics. Um, I have been an R user for over a decade, but recently got interested in Yulia. And as much fun as statistics research is, I'm still yearning to come back to the practical, useful side of, you know, analytic analysis. And so I think that Yulia Health is like a great way to both go back to those topics I cared about and get into the language, which I have also been playing around with and seems to be extremely interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Great to have you. Okay, so if I might. So I'm Adam, I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist and I'm the developer of NeuroAnalyzer, uh, which was just today uh, included in the Julia Health. <laughs> so thank you for your help, Jacob. Uh, just very briefly, it's a toolbox for analyzing neurophysiological data in Julia, uh, mostly EEG, but also uh, MEG, uh, which is only partially included right now, but it will grow over time, I think. <laughs> Uh, I'm also doing uh, NIRS analysis uh, using Julia, uh, using NeuroAnalyzer. And uh, as I'm using uh, methods of neurostimulation like TMS and TDCS in clinical practice, I'm also going to add uh, the modeling of uh, those methods in the NeuroAnalyzer in the future. So here's the link to the website of the project and I uh, welcome you to visit it and uh, maybe help <laughs> developing it. Thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. And Adam, definitely like, uh, in the next uh, couple uh, sections here for today's meeting, I'll give you some more time to talk about the package, but okay. fantastic Thanks. to have you. So thank you for joining. Hello. I'm Aurora, I'm a PhD student in France in computer science, and my research is applied to neuroscience data, in particular uh, data from the functional MRI. And I saw in today's uh, program that there will be a presentation about, about coma MRI, and so I was uh, interested in it. Thank you. Awesome, thank you for joining Aurora. Hello, uh, I'm Alice. So I am an intern, an informatics intern at the Africa Health Research Institute in South Africa. And for the past six months, I've been um, exclusively um, dealing with Julia. So I've learned Julia and I've been applying it to data management tasks. Um, but actually I have a background in bioinformatics. And the next six months of my internship is going to be on bioinformatics. So um, hence why I want to learn more about Julia Health for those sorts of applications. Awesome. Great to have you. Thank you, Alice. Okay. Oh, uh, who did I interrupt? Uh, sorry, you can go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm Edwin. I'm a senior data manager for uh, Ari in South Africa. Uh, I've recently uh, just actually learned uh, uh, a new programming language in Julia. Uh, um, my background is basically computer science, but I'm currently supporting uh, data management activities in clinical trials. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing what other people are doing and learn more in terms of uh, how I can implement uh, some of the uh, data management processes using Julia. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Edwin. All right. Is that everyone for introductions? Oh, I see a hand, Carlos. <laughs> I'll let you go ahead and speak. I'm Carlos Castillo, and I'm the main developer of Como MRI. So I heard someone was interested. It's very nice. And I'm also a PhD student 
at King's College London in a joint degree with uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. I'm, I'm currently based in Chile, but I will move soon. Cool. Awesome. Glad to have you back, Carlos. <laughs> All right. All right, I don't see any more hands up. So I see people uh, keep filtering in. Um, I think for sake of time, let's go ahead and uh, move on to some of the things that we have planned to discuss today. If anyone is new joining the call right now and you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself, if you wanna put a little introduction about yourself in the chat, uh, that'd be fantastic. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next topic that I have planned. So um, let me go ahead and share back uh, the screen. All right, and just making sure, can everyone see the screen all right? Yes, we can see it. OK, awesome. So uh, moving on to uh, kind of the new contributor roundup for <laughs> uh, this month within Julia Health, I am very, very excited and pleased to welcome uh, the Coma MRI team here to Julia Health. Um, for those of you who are not aware of Coma MRI, they are fantastic. Uh, you know, new Julia Health uh, package within uh, the Julia ecosystem designed for MRI simulations, and actually. Uh, Carlos, who is here today, uh, can do a far better explanation around coma MRI. Uh, so, um, Carlos, do you want to give maybe a quick, like, minute or minute or so introduction about what coma is, and maybe just talk a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Well, coma MRI is a project I started during the the pandemic because I couldn't scan uh, for obvious reasons, and. The idea was to basically have like a virtual scanner or a way to reproduce everything that is in the scanner in a more controlled way. And uh, from the start, we wanted uh, to make it easy to use. So we put a lot of effort in this graphical user interface that is the, like in this GIF that is repeating. And basically you can import sequences or you can import phantoms and just press simulate and, and it should work. And we also are using other open source packages uh, like MRI reco.jl that we use for the reconstruction part. And and yeah, that's a, a summary. It's, and just recently we moved it to Julia Health. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, definitely Carlos, I'll give you some more time to talk about the project a little bit as we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Google Summer of Code projects here and maybe next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, super thankful for having you join the Julia Health uh, group, which is really exciting. And just to share the wonderful advertisement uh, that uh, Carlos and company made about Coma MRI, uh, they are part of Google Summer of Code this year. So if you are interested, we'll be talking about that in about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, they're a really exciting team. And I'm excited to see some of the work that they'll be doing uh, both with Google Summer of Code and in the future. <laughs> so I uh, just want to take a second to introduce uh, the next project or the next uh, new contributor to the Julia Health ecosystem. Um, and I'll let Adam talk about this in just a minute is neuralanalyzer.jl, uh, which is a toolbox for neurophysiological data. Now I heard a little bit from Adam earlier. So Adam, um, I'll let you talk a little bit more about what is Neuroanalyzer and just uh, introduce it over maybe like uh, two or three minutes. Um, if you want to share a screen, uh, you can share a screen or I can uh, keep sharing over here. So uh, Adam, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so briefly, it's a toolbox for analyzing uh, various new physiological data. Currently, mostly for EEG data, uh, for resting and for ERPs. Uh, if you could scroll down a little, uh, there are some detailed functionalities. Uh, more? Yep. Even more, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, basically, basically, what it can do right now is to import various formats of EEG data, mostly EDF, BDF, and GDF, and some other types. Uh, 
some types are not fully supported yet, like for example, a GLAB set data. Uh, we can also import uh, near infrared spectroscopy data in various uh, data formats and uh, mass uh, motor evoked potentials uh, from TMS simulators. Uh, with the EEG data, we can do most basic editing functions like edit channel data, trim channels, uh, remove part of the signal, add channels, remove channels. Uh, you can also resample. Uh, could you scroll a bit down, please? Yeah, so we can uh, interpolate bad channels. Uh, bad channels can also be auto detected. Um, then you can reference EEG data, which is to calculate. Uh, differences between various combinations of channels. Uh, you have a set of uh, filters uh, to remove, uh, like for example, uh, various types of noises. Uh, all commonly used filters are already implemented. Uh, there are some automatic uh, filters, like for example, for automatic removal of power line noise. Uh, ICA and PCA, the composition and reconstruction is also already implemented. Uh, some specific uh, methods of analyzing, like for uh, near infrared uh, spectroscopy. Then you can analyze various uh, aspects of the data, and uh, there are also um, some non interactive and interactive plotting functions. Uh, so you can uh, produce uh, either uh, publication ready uh, figures or you can interactively. Uh, analyze various uh, visual aspects of the data. Uh, so right now it's uh, in the process. Uh, I already am using it in my uh, research practice, uh, but also I think that uh, there is a lot uh, more to do. Uh, the next major step is to add uh, more detailed in, uh, MEG analysis. Uh, so mostly for localization of uh, brain signals, uh, which is uh, my goal for the next few months. And I do hope that by the end of the year, I will also prepare the first uh, manuscript uh, reporting the functionality of the toolbox uh, and the manuscript will be published in uh, uh, neuroscience uh, journal by the end of the year. Amazing. Thank you so much for the introduction about uh, this awesome package, as well as just some of the work that you're doing, Adam. Um, I will also highlight that just today, uh, yeah, just today, right before today's meeting, we were able to bring uh, NeuroAnalyzer into the Julia Health organization. So if you aren't familiar with the Julia Health GitHub organization, I'll drop a link to it in the chat so you can check out all the different packages that we have uh, available within the Julia Health ecosystem. Um, and if you want to go ahead and start uh, looking at some of these packages, here's Neuro Analyzer. If you scroll down further, Coma MRI is here. So if you have any questions about these packages, feel free to open up issues or get in touch with the uh, maintainers of these packages. So thank you so much for um, joining everyone and thank you to the new contributors. So give me just a second. I'm just going to go ahead and share uh, that link to the chat. Uh, so give me just a second. That's the link to the Julia Health Organization. So if you want to check out any of these uh, wonderful new packages that just came out, or if you're just new to the Julia, Ecos Julia Health ecosystem and want to see more, uh, feel free to take a look around there. So uh, moving on from here, uh, just some uh, more, a little bit of housekeeping, as well as just some other uh, news pieces from within the Julia Health ecosystem. Uh, so just to celebrate a little bit, uh, we have uh, one upcoming uh, conference that Julia Health Talk was uh, submitted and subsequently accepted to, and that is the Northeastern University uh, RISE conference, which will be taking place um, this April. Uh, so this will be a pretty fun event. I'll actually be the presenter uh, for this particular uh, conference abstract, uh, conference poster session. Uh, where I'll be sharing some about the uh, tooling that we have available in Julia Health for observational health research, as well as how that's being used to explore uh, some of the uh, disparities and inequities that we can find within population health or community health level uh, statistics. So if anyone has any questions about that, you know, feel free to reach out. 
otherwise, uh, I'll be sure to share kind of the results from that uh, come April. So yay, <laughs> kind of exciting times. But uh, with that being said, uh, the next piece that I wanted to highlight that I'm exceptionally excited about is we are actually opening up uh, for the first time, the <laughs> first time ever to my knowledge, a blog on the Julia Health website. So uh, the Julia Health uh, website, you know, this is the Julia Health website where we keep track of all our meetings, advertise the different packages that we have available throughout the ecosystem and ways to engage with the Julia Health community. Uh, something that has been missing for a while from this uh, ecosystem has been a place for Julia Health members to share ideas, uh, news about their packages, or just how their packages can be used across various levels of domains. These are different than tutorials because I see those more going into package um, documentation itself. The blog is more designed for, you know, here's how I'm using these Julia Health packages, or here's how I'm using Julia to accomplish these health goals that might not otherwise fit very neatly within documentation for packages, but they're a great story to share. So actually, I'm excited to say that we have our one of our very first blog posts being created right now by uh, Jay Sanjay, uh, who's been a fantastic contributor uh, to the Julia Health uh, organization so far over the past couple, several months actually at this point. I think Jay has been an active contributor within Julia Health since about October, which is amazing. And we're very thankful for Jay. Uh, so stay tuned as this PR uh, continues to grow and be reviewed and revised. If you want to take a look at the blog post so far, uh, here is uh, the issue uh, that's opened up about it, which is on patient pathways within Julia Health. Pretty exciting stuff within the world of observational health research. Additionally, uh, there is another uh, blog post in the works by our one of our uh, previous Google Summer of Code uh, contributors, uh, Freda Abdul Aziz, and she'll be uh, we'll, we're working on finishing up that uh, PR on this blog post as well. We kind of had a bit of a stalling period, but now we're getting picked back up with this idea of a blog. So if anyone wants to be contributing to this blog, has an idea for a blog post, please let us know in the uh, Julia Health Slack or rather the Health Medicine channel. Share your ideas. We're more than happy to help, support, and review. So just wanted to share that as an exciting new development within the Julia Health ecosystem. So uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to actually take a second to skip uh, the task follow-ups because I want to go ahead and get us talking about uh, Google Summer of Code and Julia Health this year. Uh, just talking about some of the logistics around it, what's the status of things, what are the projects, that sort of thing. I know several people are interested in this, so let me go ahead and jump to that topic of discussion for today. Uh, we'll also, I'm also earmarking about five to 10 minutes of time for any questions or discussion around uh, these projects. So if you have any questions, uh, please save them and we'll address them in about uh, five to 10 minutes after I talk a little bit about the projects as well as the status of Google Summer of Code and Julia Health. So uh, where are things at right now? And I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm just gonna pop over here. I uh, just wanna say, so where are we right now with Google? Code and Julia Health. Well, the great news uh, for uh, this year is already Julia has been accepted into Google Summer of Code. So that's fantastic. <laughs> right now, uh, we're waiting on hearing some results about what exactly, how many spots that we have available for uh, Google Summer of Code uh, this year. Uh, with that being said, I'm also not only one of the mentors for Julia Health in Google Summer of Code, I'm also the uh, one of the administrators for Google Summer of Code for the entire uh, Julia Health or Julia organization overall. Uh, so as I learn more, you know, you'll see me posting in the G GSOC channel, some other channels just talking about logistics. But right now we have been accepted and now we're just waiting to see how many spots uh, that we get for our fellows this uh, summer, which is super exciting. Um, so with that to say, uh, I want to switch back over to talking about the specific projects that we have um, available for this year. So let me go ahead and highlight those. Give me a second. I'm just going to go back to sharing my screen. Yeah, so as I've kind of been mentioning, uh, there's this idea within Julia Health that we have a variety of different 
uh, arms or branches within Julia Health. Uh, so far, we have what's known as the observational health sub-ecosystem, medical imaging sub-ecosystem, and the inter interoperability and standards ecosystem. Uh, so right now, this is a current list of the various projects that we have available within Julia Health. I'll go ahead and drop this in the chat in just a moment. So if anyone's curious about these projects, you can take a look at them. Uh, but yeah, so right now within the Association of Health uh, sub-ecosystem, we have a variety of different tools uh, that we've been developing to analyze and research what is known as uh, real-world data. This is the sort of data uh, that comes from electronic health records, patient medical claims, health information exchanges, these sort of data sources that lends itself really nicely to driving some interesting results as well as insights about community health level sorts of um, results and conclusions, such as you know what might be certain demographic information that we want to know about populations and things of that nature. So we have a couple different projects listed uh, this year. Um, then again, we also, coming to the medical imaging sub-ecosystem, have a variety of different uh, medical imaging packages. Some of those encompass uh, the MedEye or MedPipe 3D ecosystem, which is spearheaded right now by uh, Dr. Jacob Matura, who I don't think was able to join the call today, but you know, uh, this is another aspect of the medical imaging ecosystem here within uh, Julia Health. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, we have projects from the Coma MRI team uh, down here, where we're looking at how we can use, uh, you know, Julia's great GPU support to be able to do even more highly efficient uh, MRI simulations. So um, I'm going to go ahead, uh, take some time to kind of pause for questions, pause if anyone has any uh, questions about these projects. And then I'm also going to talk about the uh, logistics of the Google Summer of Code project well, process, such as like timelines, things to be you know conscious of, uh, that sort of thing. So I'll go ahead and pause right here. And I'm actually going to drop into the channel uh, the link to these projects. So um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask right now. And if you could, um, for anyone who has questions, um, if you can raise your hand, um, like on the Zoom, uh, that'd be great. So I can see your hand raised. Or if, and if you can't figure out the hand raising feature, um, feel free to unmute and also ask. <laughs> All right, uh, Carlos, I see your hand raised. I'll, yeah. There's a quick question, but in, in comparison to other years, like how many projects from uh, Julia Health have been part of Google Summer of Code or how does that work? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's a great question. So last year was actually Julia Health's first year of doing uh, Google Summer of Code. We had our uh, first student cohort, which was last year, just one individual student, uh, but that wasn't due to a constraint on how many people or how many spots were available. That was a constraint of just who was all interested in contributing to Julia Health. So uh, this year, I know for a fact, we already have, uh, so I, I wouldn't say several, but we do have a couple students already interested in being Google Summer of Code fellows for Julia Health this summer. So already, uh, just, you know, full disclosure, it's looking like it's going to be a very exciting sort of competitive environment this year. But um, in terms of how many slots we can get, um, I, I'm not 100% sure. But as uh, like I mentioned earlier, as I find out more about how many slots that Julia as an organization gets overall, um, I can help with maybe estimating some of that. Because what it really comes down to is, you know, who all will, you know, write proposals, how good are these proposals and who is available to help us with uh, mentoring students? So it's all functions of those things, uh, but that's generally how uh, it works, Carlos. Okay, and I see another hand raised from Jan. Uh, I'll, yeah, take it away. Hi, Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. And I'll have a question about the proposals because uh, what are the best practices and uh, how it should look like? Maybe you have uh, some more good uh, 
somewhere uh, to show us this or or place where we can go to to see what uh, and how it should be. Yeah, excellent question. Um, I'll kind of start from the the end of that question, which was resources. Um, I don't have resources offhand at the moment, but I do know they exist. So what I'll do, I'll share them back into the JSOC channel that we have and Julia just uh, so everyone can see them. Uh, but in terms of best practices <clears throat> for proposals, uh, as someone who's you know both been on you know the mentoring side as well as the admin side, uh, what I really like to see in student proposals, and again, uh, this is more kind of my personal perspective as both a reviewer and mentor in the past. Uh, what I've really enjoyed seeing from students has been, you know, not only is the proposal uh, very well constructed, but also that the student has had engagement either directly with the Julia organization in the past. Like it can be, it doesn't have to necessarily be the particular sub organization that they're working with like if you haven't worked with julia health before but you've worked with say like julia gpu the siml ecosystem parts of the ecosystem that you know as long as you have contact with the julia ecosystem i love to see that um but as it pertains to actually writing a really strong high quality proposal uh some general advice that for me i look for when we're you know doing these proposal reviews is that the uh, project is well scoped. And what I mean by that is that there are very concrete goals that you have specific for your project. Uh, where I've seen students and where I've seen projects struggle in the past is when uh, these goals that you have for a project are rather uh, vague or kind of open-ended sort of uh, problems. That is where I see students struggle the most because it leads to sometimes uh, miscommunication between the student, the mentor, as well as to the uh, kind of Google Summer of Code organization overall, I would suggest very strongly that as you write your proposal and you are in communication with your potential mentor for your project, uh, make sure you can have your goals clearly defined. What I do with some of my students is actually explicitly help them with crafting uh, several different GitHub organization, I mean, not organizations, issues for their particular project. So if you wanna to contribute to a particular package, uh, go ahead, work with your mentors to open up some issues, uh, describe what these problems are. And then, you know, maybe by the end of that process, you'll have like between five to 10 different sorts of issues. And those right there are your concrete things that you're going to work on for that package throughout your proposal or for your fellowship period. Including those within your proposal to me indicates it is a very clearly defined and well scoped project. So that is something um, that is probably like the biggest thing uh, beyond you know having some experience with open source in the past. I would say about writing a very strong proposal. I hope that helps with answering the question. Yeah, can I have one additional? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. Okay, so um, I'm. Uh... I'm not sure how to, to tackle the the scope actually, because um, in these projects uh, there are a few uh, bullets, uh, and I'm in, I'm curious: is better to tackle a few of those uh, bullets, or go deeper in one area and create more issues and and more valuable uh, valuable content in one specific topic area uh, for for yeah for technology. Yeah, um, let me see if I'm understanding, maybe if I'm understanding your question correctly. So like when we were looking at the, I'll, I'll share my screen. Uh, when we were looking at the Julia Health projects, for example, um, you know, for example, with this particular project, you know, there's a lot of information here talking about potential outcomes. And then what is the success criteria and like some of the time needed with certain things. If I'm understanding what you're asking, are you asking kind of about, you know, there's a lot of different topics that I can do within this project. Is it better to focus on just one thing and go deep with it? Or how should I balance that? Or maybe like, do you want to explain, like maybe explain the question a little bit more? Yeah, it's, you, you understood it good, but uh, to, be clear, to be clearer, uh, there are around five or six bullet points. And yeah. should we, uh, in our proposal and get, get some uh, 
topics, uh, parts of those, uh, all of those uh, bullet points, or just pick four or five? Sh should we have all or not? <laughs> yeah. Then okay, I see. I totally see your question now. So, um, with the different projects, not only just for Julia Health, but just you know in general, um, what I would suggest uh, in this you know, in this context is definitely be in communication with that particular mentor for the project. Uh, because I think something that uh, is maybe not explicit within, you know, several different Julia organizations, but could be made more explicit um, is the fact that as, you know, new fellows come to, you know, Google Summer of Code, we don't necessarily expect that every single student is going, or every single fellow is going to have expertise on every single one of those bullets. <laughs> and so uh, we definitely see this as a opportunity for the fellows to grow uh, over the summer. So what I would suggest you do is work with the mentors on, you know, your particular expertise, your particular interests, align it, like work with them to align your expertise, your background with those particular projects, and then, you know, work with them on that part of the proposal. Because yeah, it might be overwhelming to see, you know, a list of 10 different bullet points of different, you know, topics that could easily be maybe a semester's worth of work, if not longer. Um, and just work with them on uh, just narrowing down that project. Like I said earlier, you know, we want to have it scope, we want to have it clearly defined. And, you know, I've seen that be a strong indicator of success in the past. So I hope that helps with answering the question. That was great. Thank you. Okay. okay, and I just wanted to say, because I was not able to get earlier, I wanted to introduce Jan, but he's already <laughs> introduced himself because we are we already started working a bit uh, together. So uh, I suppose we have some communication. <laughs> great. And Jacob, great to see you. By the way, everyone in the uh, call right now, this is Dr. Jacob Matura, who I was mentioning earlier, who is the mentor for a lot of the MedPipe 3D packages within the medical imaging projects this summer so great to have you here jacob <laughs> yeah so happy to uh, be also i am just for a couple of months but of course uh, i just wanted to say uh, that if anybody is interested in medical imaging of course you can get back to me and i will try to uh, help or try to contribute so, so uh, thank you very much for giving me a voice for a moment and now i uh, get back let's get back to the discussion sounds good yeah, and also Jacob brought up a great point, which is if you do want to get in touch with any of the mentors uh, for these projects, again, the best place to be reaching out to us uh, is on the Julia Slack. If you have not uh, signed up for an account on Julia Slack, uh, let me go ahead and drop that in the chat. But in particular, the best way within uh, like the Julia Slack to get in touch with us is to join the health and medicine channel, uh, all of us mentors are there. We are happy to answer any questions that you have about these projects and uh, keep going from there. So uh, that is the link to the Slack. So if you have not uh, joined the Slack, um, please go ahead and do so. <laughs> We'd love to see you. Um, yeah, so I will pause here uh, if anyone has any additional questions. And it can be about logistics, it can be about, you know, projects in general, it doesn't necessarily have to just pertain to Julia Health. Um, happy to answer questions here. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any more active questions at the moment. If there are additional questions, please post them in the chat. I'm happy to follow up with you. Or if you didn't uh, have a chance to ask your question now, but something comes up later, uh, please join the Health and Medicine Slack channel and feel free to post your questions there. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I wanted to just take the last maybe like two or three minutes here to talk about uh, Google Summer of Code uh, timelines. So. This is the last little um, bit of logistics here for Google Summer of Code. As I know, sometimes timelines with Google Summer of Code can be confusing. Uh, so what I wanted to mention is that uh, these first couple of dates which have passed, uh, these different um, uh, things were more for us mentors as well as organizations. So you can 
safely or safely ignore most of these uh, projects or most of these deadlines here. If you go to the Google Summer of Code uh, website right now, you can actually see what organizations were accepted. As I mentioned, Julia was one of those accepted. So we'll have a variety of different pack, a variety of different opportunities for uh, potential fellows to apply to in the future. Um, and this right now is the uh, kind of like the time that fellows who are interested in participating within Google Summer of Code within Julia. Uh, this is a time when they should start reaching out to different mentors across different projects, whether in Julia Health or otherwise. And uh, from now, on, from now, starting at February 22nd to March 18th is really that time when that discussion period should be happening. And then also uh, between March 18th to April 2nd, that is the period when most of the time uh, students will be, or potential fellows will be expected to, uh, you know, be working on their proposals, be working with their mentors on scoping their proposals. And you must have those proposals submitted by April 2nd, uh, 1800 UTC time. If you do not, uh, there's uh, nothing I can do uh, to help you with uh, getting your submission in. Um, so just, you know, have that clearly on the calendar for yourselves. That way, if you're working with your mentors on proposals in the future, I just want to make sure nothing, no miscommunication happens on your side and that everyone who is interested in uh, Google Summer of Code fellowships can have a great experience uh, this upcoming summer. So I uh, just wanted to go ahead and, you know, just go over that timeline. Just the last little piece of logistics here as we're coming into kind of the home stretch of Google Summer of Code application period. Um, so yeah, so that was everything I wanted to discuss for uh, Google Summer of Code and Julia Health. Um, I'll go ahead and, you know, since we had that open discussion already, uh, we can move on to uh, the next topic, which I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, which is this new idea that I kind of had uh, for Julia Health. Uh, which is what I call a <laughs> Julia Health Day, and I explain I'll explain what that means uh, right now. So, uh, within the Julia Health ecosystem as it stands, and let me go ahead and jump over here. Uh, Julia Health is rapidly growing, which is extremely exciting to see. As you can see, we have a variety of different packages pinned here, and within the last week, uh, you can see that so many different packages have been app updated by different contributors within you know the last month, the last two weeks, <laughs> the last hour <laughs> as it appears. Uh, so Julia Health is growing, which is really, really fantastic and exciting to see uh, this year. This was a dream of mine that I had for Julia Health um, by the end of last year. And I'm very excited to see that this is happening. Um, so what I mean by Julia Health Day is I realized that uh, Right now, Julia Health might be a little bit confusing about where to go and get started as a potential new member of the Julia Health ecosystem, and perhaps even just a new member of Julia, the Julia community overall. Uh, within Julia Health, you know, there's these three main core areas that we have, uh, you know, seen here in my fantastic diagram that, you know, as a graphic designer, I take great pride in is the three main areas that we're talking about, uh, which is the observational health sub-ecosystem, the mid-type 3D sub-ecosystem, and the interoperability and standards sub-ecosystem. And actually now uh, we're growing that mid-type 3D sub-ecosystem uh, more into a more broader general medical imaging sub-ecosystem. So there's various parts of the Julia Health e ecosystem already uh, that can make jumping into and joining uh, this part of the Julia community, a little tricky, just about, you know, where to get started, what uh, to contribute on and how to use this work for your research in the future. Uh, so this idea of a Julia Health Day uh, is where we can kind of have a sort of, you know, fair or like a, a showing of the different packages across the ecosystem that folks might be interested in this showing off or showing how they can be used. So I wanted to talk about, you know, what might be interesting to folks here within the Julia Health community about what they might want to hear about, what they might want to know about for this potential Julia Health Day, which could be like a two to three hour, you know, event where various parts of the Julia uh, community come together and talk about, you know, particular applications that folks might be interested in, ways to do things that people might be interested in, 
as well as just what parts of the Julia Health ecosystem, you know, are growing, need support, or could be used for a variety of different topics. So I'm going to pause here and uh, just kind of take in some feedback that people might have about this idea of a Julia Health Day and, you know, what we could uh, potentially schedule for such an event. So I'll go ahead and pause right here. So this is just an open uh, discussion period. So if anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, so maybe uh, to get started, I could talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that I wanna be uh, chatting about with Julia Health, which is uh, the observational health uh, sub ecosystem. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a variety of different uh, tools within Julia Health that support working with uh, things such as electronic medical, electronic medical records, patient medical claims, this sort of information. And we've been doing a lot of great work already with these tools through the last couple of years at this point, have had some publications come out of that work, as well as just some overall packages being developed. And one of the things that's been tricky is the fact that uh, within this domain, a lot of the previous state-of-the-art work has been written within tools like the R program, R programming language, Stata, SPSS, and things of that nature. Uh, and what's been tricky has been working with some of these uh, tools and finding uh, more or less their analogs within uh, the Julia ecosystem to say like, okay, if you're coming from R, if you're coming from uh, Stata or SPSS, what might be the tools that you want to use for uh, doing your same work within Julia. And so that's something that I want to talk about, I think, for this Julia Health Day, where we can highlight some of these tools um, that Julia has where you could potentially do that work. Um, I'd be curious if anyone has any thoughts on that or any feedback, uh, but that's one idea that I had for this Julia Health Day. Uh, hi, again. Um, I'm actually quite interested in, in this topic you described. I used to work as a data analyst at the Peruvian Ministry of Health so I use R, SQL, and had a lot of, you know, these common issues of record linkage and working with huge databases. Um, and on one side, when I think about observational data, we have, you know, this kind of public health approach. But then when I read the description on the website right now, it seems to be more oriented to like um, predicting individual health, like I as a doctor want to predict how, you know, some outcome, treatment outcome for my patient. So I, I feel that right now, like the scope isn't completely clear to me, or at least it seems quite ambitious as to what you're targeting in terms of applications and uh, users, right? Yeah, uh, and to be clear, uh, when you were saying like uh, where the vagueness was or the fuzziness was, um, are you saying like more what tools that we have available right now within Julia, or are you just saying, how you've seen like other organizations saying, we're trying to do all these things, uh, but I don't have a clear understanding of how I can do these things. I, I am specifically asking what your vision is uh, for this project as, as the lead, uh, because I see, as, as you mentioned, I, I know that there's a lot of tools developed in a variety of other languages and applications. And personally, having had experience with all of these in the past, I think, you know, Yulia is a great, uh, place where this could be unified as, you know, as a future vision. So I want to know what your vision particularly is for this, right? Uh, okay, got you. Yeah, so what I was imagining was having, you know, more of that broader discussion around actually precisely that, uh, meaning the that, <laughs> meaning like some of these issues that you're talking about, like, for example, going between like three different languages or going between four different uh, tech stacks all at once. I'm very. I'm also very familiar with what you're ta like talking about and describing there. And so, I think what would be uh, great for this particular event would be talking around like, here's this workflow where in the past I've had to go from SQL pulling out you know medical information from this database, crosswalking it to you know a population health level sort of you know another data set you know maybe at a you know state level at a community level. And then, you know, I want to talk about my particular patient populations I'm interested in. So maybe one, you know, possible part of this event could really be focused on talking about workflows, uh, such as like what you're describing. Um, I do agree. Uh, it is still a little fuzzy right now, but I'm wanting to work on that fuzziness to kind of address some of these questions that you're bringing up, which is 
when I come to Julia, I want to do this sort of same workflow, but how do I do it? That would be a goal of mine that I see right now um, for people coming from this background, coming to Julia, you know, benefiting and learning from. Does that kind of help okay. answer the question? Yes, that, that sounds uh, extremely cool. And um, I suppose that uh, at this time, rather than seeing who comes to Yulia, perhaps it would be uh, most interesting to go and seek out organizations and discuss with them, right? What problems they have, what tools they have and try and come up with analog. But yeah, I guess like this Yulia day would be the space to also discuss possible approaches and so on. But yeah, it looks super, it sounds super interesting. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, I am, I don't want to make any announcements yet, but I am planning to hopefully maybe have uh, a potential speakers from like some of these different groups that you're talking about who might not necessarily be, you know, parts of the Julia community, but they could come in, share their experience, and then we can think through as like members of the Julia community, like, okay, how do we get a part of that? <laughs> or how do we join uh, researchers in that space? Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I thought I saw a hand up, but okay. All right, uh, Jan. Uh, Building on the uh, topic of pipeline and how to work in Julia, because I'm new to Julia and I'm especially new to health topics, uh, it, will, it would be great to see in such day uh, what are the strength uh, in practice, uh, Julia, because I'm familiar with Python and if I heard, I just heard that Julia is XYZ better, it's okay. But uh, to feel it and to see uh, in action and uh, in some project, some pipeline uh, environment would be great to, to actually understand the, the, the values that uh, Julia bring to the tables. No, I think that's a great point. Um, and actually, I can share with you uh, in the chat um, one part that I think folks would be really interested in already, uh, which is for folks coming from the like R or tidy ecosystems, like especially like the tidyverse created by Hadley Wickham, uh, there's already uh, a Julia version kind of of the tidyverse. <laughs> so if you're coming from R, coming into Julia, wanting to know more about how to do that, like popular pipelines that you've already done in R, you know, that's a great place to look at is the tidy your organization within Julia itself. So anyways, Jan, to your point though, I think that's a great idea. So I have that written down. Yeah, I'll take just uh, one more minute here. Um, if anyone has any ideas that they want to uh, share. Uh, hey community, uh, I'm, I'm Nam, uh, an undergraduate student from India. Uh, so quite excited to be uh, a part of Julia community. Um, it's gotten over Julia not because of GSOC as uh, scientific community enthusiasts. So really find Julia interesting and then uh, a part uh, of my day to day activity. Like I just fall in love with Julia. Uh, so quite be in the Slack community and just have someone. Uh, I just see uh, all these things happening. I was interested like when Julia was being a part of uh, health uh, initiatives. So just wanted to uh, ask, like, uh, since I'm quite interested in this GSOC and I was sorry, I was just late to the meeting and I saw things uh, being thrown here. Uh, I was just interested in drug discovery and stuff like that. So I just wanted to ask, like, if drug discovery comes under the section of health and medicines in Korea. Yeah, um, no, I think that'd be a great thing to talk about for the Julia Health Day, just talking more about where is Julia being used in just health research in general, spanning the entire spectrum. Because I know we, uh, earlier in the talk, uh, or earlier in today's meeting, you know, Adam was mentioning that Neural Analyzer, for example, is already being used in some of his published research. I know that uh, Dr. Jacob Ventura was also talking about his research, uh, some of his really tools being used for his research. And I know I've been using uh, tools as well to create uh, other sorts of like research and publications. And um, there's other things that we could definitely talk about, uh, for sure. So I think that's a great idea, Ram. Um, I have that written down, uh, but yeah, I will say, uh, just because, uh, we only have about five more minutes left 
for today's meeting. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of talk about the last little things I had on uh, the agenda. We might not get to everything, uh, but that is okay. <laughs> we can save that for uh, next month's meeting. Um, but yeah, uh, so moving on from here, I did want to just take a second to uh, highlight some of the final topics uh, that I want to discuss. Uh, for example, today, uh, Dale Black, who is a member of the Julia Ecosystem, uh, Julia Health Ecosystem, uh, is working on a new project called Glass Notebooks. If you're familiar with uh, Pluto Notebooks, uh, Glass Notebooks are very similar in that they are, I believe, published or deployed versions of Pluto Notebooks um, introduced onto the web. So if you're interested in having like dashboards written in Julia, uh, Glass Notebooks might be an interesting uh, approach to take. Uh, and again, um, this is a new project that Dale has been uh, working on. I'll share this in the chat. I want to take a second to highlight it because Dale has actually been working with uh, particular applications of health research within these glass notebooks um, examples. So if you want to see more examples of how this is being used, uh, just wanted to take a second to highlight his work. And then uh, moving on from there, as always, uh, just want to do a second to talk about some upcoming and ongoing research opportunities um, that if folks are interested in, you know, there's opportunities to join in. Uh, so within uh, right now at Northeastern University, which is my home university, uh, you know, we're still looking for uh, potential collaborators of anyone who might be interested in doing population health or observational health research with us here at Northeastern University. Uh, right now, uh, we have a patient uh, cohort or patient population of around 35 million patients uh, to work with within our data. Uh, this encompasses data from electronic medical records, um, like uh, medical claims information and things of that nature. So if any of that research sounds interesting and you want to get involved, um, I'll be the point of contact for that. So please do let me know. Uh, and then finally, uh, don't forget that this summer is JuliaCon 2024, which is really exciting. It'll be this year over in, uh, I believe, the Netherlands. So just pulling this up here. And so, uh, yep, it'll be in Eindhoven. So it'll be July 9th through the 13th. So if you are interested about going to JuliaCon this year, uh, tickets are available and on sale now. Um, I do also want to mention, and hang on, I realize this is uh, looks a little hard to read, uh, so I'll give you just a second to fix this. Yes, there we go. Uh, so I did want to mention that JuliaCon this year actually is offering uh, scholarships as well as uh, support with some funding. So if funding is an issue for you uh, to attend JuliaCon, uh, if you're, you know, whether here in parts of the Americas or other, you know, parts of the world that aren't <laughs> over near the Netherlands, uh, there are scholarship opportunities available. So please, you know, if you don't, if you do want to go but aren't sure, um, please come to this website, look at the scholarships that are available, and get in, in touch with uh, members of the JuliaCon organizing organizing committee. You can find more information about JuliaCon and those organizing members. Uh, through the JuliaCon channel. It is uh, in the Julia Slack, and it is just called JuliaCon. So um, you can get in touch, ask about these scholarships, and see about ways of getting yourself to JuliaCon. We'd love to have you, and we'd love to see you. And so uh, with that being said, uh, we're just about at time for this month's meeting. So I just want to say a very huge and warm thank you to everyone who is able to come uh, this month. Uh, again, these are monthly meetings. Uh, for kind of the more uh, America's uh, European Africa friendly time zones. Uh, we do have other monthly meetings that are uh, more geared towards the Oceania and Asia specific time zones uh, that happen at another time during the month. Uh, but if you want to, you know, continue being a member, please join the health and medicine channel. We'd love to have you. And thank you so much for joining. Uh, so again, everyone, my name is Jacob Zelko. And we'll hope to hear from you more in the future meetings. Thank you so much for joining. And if you have any questions, see us at the Health Medicine channel. Thank you. <laughs> With that being said, let's go ahead and end the meeting. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.